Good morning. Today is Monday, the 13th of September. We're in the 24th week of the churches here, and it's the feast of St. John Chrysostom. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, who will that the Bishop St. John Chrysostom should be illustrious by his wonderful eloquence and his experience of suffering, grant us, we pray, that instructed by his teachings, we may be strengthened through the example of his invincible patience. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading continues in Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. My advice is that first of all, there should be prayers offered for everyone, petitions, intercessions and thanksgiving and especially for kings and others in authority, so that we may be able to live religious and reverent lives in peace and quiet. To do this is right and will please God our Saviour. He wants everyone to be saved and reach full knowledge of the truth, for there is only one God, and there is only one mediator between God and mankind, himself a man, Christ Jesus, who sacrificed himself as a ransom for them all. He is the evidence of this, sent at the appointed time, and I have been named a herald and apostle of it, and, I am telling you the truth and no lie, a teacher of the faith and truth to the pagans. In every place, then, I want the men and women to lift their hands up reverently in prayer, with no anger or argument. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, 1 to 10. When Jesus had come to the end of all he had come to the end of all he wanted the people to hear, he went into Capernaum. A centurion there had a servant, a favourite of his, who was sick and near death. Having heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him to ask him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. He deserves this of you, they said, because he is friendly towards our people. In fact, he is the one who built the synagogue. So Jesus went with them and was not very far from the house when the centurion sent word to him by some friends. Sir, he said, do not put yourself to trouble because I am not worthy to have you under my roof. And for this same reason, I did not presume to come to you myself, but give the word and let my servants be cured. For I am under authority myself and have soldiers under me. And I say to one man, Go, and he goes, to another, Come here, and he comes. To my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these words, he was astonished at him, and turning round, said to the crowd following him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found faith like this. And when the messengers got back to the house, they found the servant in perfect health. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's readings and the feast day, in many ways, all relate to one thing, preaching the gospel to foreigners, to Gentiles. The first reading to Timothy uh, says that when we come together for Mass, for celebrating the Lord's Supper, we must have intercessions praying for the secular authorities. And Paul makes the point that we want to live in peace with the secular authorities, must respect their appropriate authority and work towards a situation where by living in peace with all we can bring the truth of Christ to all. The Gospel is about the centurion, Roman centurion, whose servant is dying and he asks through messengers for Jesus to say a word of healing and when Jesus is on his way he hears that the servant has died and the man says you don't need to come but the centurion says quite definitely I know I have faith in Jesus if he says do this or do that it'll happen just as when I tell my staff or servants do this do that they do it this belief that Jesus had the power to affect what he said was the heart of the centurion's faith which Jesus was praised uh, so praised him for 
and the feast day, St. John Chrysostom, um, Chrysos is gold, Stoma is mouth, so he was called Golden Mouth because as a bishop, he was the Bishop of Constantinople, he preached wonderfully, and above all he wrote. He wrote many theological books, and they're part of the treasures of the Fathers of the Church, the works of St. John Chrysostom. He was reaching and writing in order to bring the Gospel to other faiths, other other belief systems to other people, to Gentiles. But he also ran into trouble when running his diocese with the secular authorities, with the emperor. And twice he was expelled, allowed to come back. And the third time he was actually on his way, on his third expulsion, when he died en route. And that's the reference in the opening prayer, that he was a man of great faith, enduring great suffering, but with great patience. Um, and again, an example to us all that whatever happens to us in life, when we suffer, we suffer in patience um, and saying, this is what I must do. And it's that which pleases the Lord. We turn to our bidding prayers. Almighty Father, the heavens cannot hold your greatness, yet through your Son we have learned to say, Father, may your kingdom come. We praise you as your children. May your name be kept holy in the hearts of all mankind. Father, may your kingdom come. Help us to live in the hope of heaven today. Make us ready to do your will on earth. Father, may your kingdom come. Give us this day the courage to forgive others as you forgive us our trespasses. Father, may your kingdom come. Father, be with us in all our trials. Do not allow us to fall away from you. Father, may your kingdom come. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord God, strength of those who hope in you, by your will, St. John Chrysostom, became renowned in the Church, for his astounding eloquence and his forbearance in persecution. Grant that we may be enriched by his teaching and encouraged by the example of his unconquerable fortitude. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Have a good day.